Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome in to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melbourne Law Duly Dome Gator Studios. Usually, we're in, in uh, at the Steve Spurrier Gridiron Grill doing it from the podcast studios, but since we had already taped Alyssa Lang, and we'll be sh uh, showing you that interview a little bit later, uh, we said, hey, look, let's just do it from home and uh, that would that would save us both a, a lot of problems, but you don't care about our problems. I know that. Um, <laughs> and nor should you. But the bottom line is uh, we've got another podcast ready for you, and Alyssa Lang will join us. She's, of course, in the SEC Network on Thursday. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking to Matt McCall about uh, college basketball. We're just going to talk college basketball. I think I identified him in last week's podcast as Mike McCall. There was a college football player named Mike McCall who played for Florida back in the Spurrier era, which is ironic because uh, today is Bill Carr's uh, the celebration of life for him. Um, Guys are dropping off left and right. I'll talk about a little, that a little bit more later. Uh, so let's get to our process service of Gainesville starting five. Uh, brought to you by process service of Gainesville. Our friend Scott Hart over there does a great job. And um, we'll start off with number one, which is, as Steve Russell and Mark White like to say, hoop, there it is. Well, hoop, there it was on Saturday. And, you know, you're sitting there and you're watching the game and you're like, the first 10 minutes, you know, whatever. The next 10 minutes, okay, you're you're okay. How you play in the second half. I've gotten to a point where it's like college basketball is becoming like the NBA where I, I don't need to watch the beginning of it. In fact, I watched the uh, USF um, FAU game yesterday and – I'm like, I finally turned it off because they were up 29, and they got within one. It was an unbelievable game. I, I, I turned it back in time for the finish of it. But anyway, the point being, Florida, here's the bottom line with Florida. They've won seven of the last eight games. And I talked about this last week. If I had told you that four weeks ago, they're going to win seven of their next eight. Uh, they're going to be – they're going to win two of them, three of them on the road. They're going to um, beat Kentucky. They're going to beat – uh, Auburn, you just said, sign me up, inject that into my veins, which is what these guys are doing when they're doing this all the time. What is it like this? Yeah. Can you see that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's pretty incredible how good they've become at winning games, finding a way to win games. Now they've won 10 in a row against Georgia and Georgia's not very good. And they're, 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 Georgia is like a lot of SEC teams at the bottom of this. Uh, this league is really good. And there are a lot of SEC teams in this league that can beat you, but probably won't. But if you give them an opportunity to beat you, they can. They're good enough to beat you. And I would put, I put that LSU team in there, and you saw them come back and tie the game. They're that good. Uh, Georgia, I put in there too. And Georgia had to lead for a lot of that game. And Florida ended up pulling away at the end. Not really pulling away, but they made all their free throws. Um, but uh, to me, the stat of the game was that uh, Walter Clayton Jr., Zion Pullen, and Will Richard went 17 for 17 at the free throw line. That used to be a big bugaboo for Florida at the beginning of the year, if you remember that. People were complaining about it. Like, why can't this team make his free throws? I remember the very first game of the season, and and I had heard Zion pull him. Hey, he doesn't miss free throws. Walter Clayton, they don't miss free throws. I think they both missed two or three in that game. As I, that's just my memory going here. I didn't write it down, but um, I'm like, oh yeah, great. Now they're here. They get now they've been lights out, um, all of them. But look, there's a lot of guys that played well in that game and played good enough, and they, that's what they're doing. That, that I love about this team is they just are finding different ways to win. In this case, they won in multiple ways. And that's the thing. They can attack you with so many different guys. Now, this doesn't mean I think this is a Final Four team or anything like that. I'm just trying to get them into the tournament. 
And we'll talk about that on number two on our process service of Gainesville starting five, which is, look, they have played their way into the tournament so that they're not even, they're like, a, I, I know Lenardi had them as a seven seed and seven seed is never good. You never know I want to be the seven. But that, nobody in Florida is going to say, oh, we don't want to be a seven seed. We'd rather be uh, the seven tens a tough game. So is the 8-9. So is the 9-8. So is the 10-7. So is any game in the NCAA tournament, unless it's a, usually a 1-16. But the point is, get in the tournament. Wherever you play, you play. I don't wor- I'm don't. i not worried about that. But they're not in yet. I say, here's what I'll say. They're in, but they're not in. I mean, they played well enough to get in, but they could still go one and uh, – what do they got? Six more games? One and five? down the stretch and be out of it, just like that. Um, that's the way it works. Let's, um, But their net is better. Their net has improved. As, like I think it was 29 today when I looked at it, or 28, 28 or 29. It, it, I mean, the net is such a flawed thing. But one team wins one game and everybody drops down. But anyway, the, the bottom line is that they got a third quad one win by not winning a game. But because Pittsburgh has won enough games to get into the top 50. And if they're in the top 50, that was a neutral site game. So that is a win that Florida gets. They they can count now as a quad one. Now, I say now they can count it today. They may not be able to count it in a week because you never know what Pitt's going to do. And that's the weird thing about it. You hope that you can win enough games that you don't have to worry about that. They played enough uh, power five opponents to get themselves in position where if they did, had a good conference, because they didn't win a lot in the con- in the non-conference, as, as you remember. They won a lot of games, um, but they didn't beat the teams that they needed to beat in terms of getting the, uh, the, the power ranking points, I guess you would say. Um, but anyway, they, they, they've done it here in the SEC and so far and in good shape. But that's where they are right now, um, and that's that's a good place to be. I mean, you know, I I, I don't I think this is the first time Florida's been up that high price since the last time they made the tournament. But we'll see what happens going forward. It's still a long way to go, and a short time to get there. <laughs> All right, let's get to number three on our process service of Gainesville starting five, which is hey, guess what? Look at the SEC standings. Guess who actually has a chance to win the SEC in basketball? The team that we were all talking about was so terrible early in the season. Um, And again, I think these guys have found themselves, but doesn't mean they can't lose themselves again. They still don't play defense. They cranked it up in the second half of that game, especially if you go back to that Georgia game, the first 10 minutes of the second half, they gave up seven points. That's where they won the game, and they were able to distance themselves in the lead and then hold on to it. But the bottom line is they're sitting here at eight and four. Uh, Alabama, which keeps winning, ten and two, they could be hard to catch. Um, but guess who plays Alabama twice? Now, I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but Florida plays Alabama twice. They got a chance to beat them twice, in theory. That makes them tied with Alabama. I'm not saying any of that's going to happen, but it does. Uh, Tennessee's nine and three. Then you've got South Carolina nine and four, um, Auburn nine and four, Kentucky eight and four, Florida eight and four. Kentucky beating Auburn was actually a good thing for Florida. If you're looking only at the SEC race, I I still didn't enjoy it. Uh, to be honest with you, I was I hate to admit it because I I'm not a big Bruce Pearl guy and I'm not a big Auburn fan, but I I was rooting for Auburn to win that game and they get just trounce. It was ugly. But the bottom line is, guys, your team, your Gators are in the race. And that's really what you would expect in your second year for your basketball coach. Be in the race for the conference championship, especially in basketball where you can change out your teams. Because as we know, with the portal, I mean, Florida's basically almost a new team, plus some freshmen, plus a couple of holdovers. Uh, but that's what you can do. Um, 
so anyway, we'll see what happens going down the down the road. It's uh, it's a lot more fun to see the Gators winning basketball games again than it was uh, the last couple of years. Anyway, let's get to number four on our process service of Gainesville starting five, and that is uh, it was not exactly the great weekend we hoped it would be for Gator baseball celebrating. A runner-up finish, yeah, they celebrated. You should celebrate a finish in second in the nation and how hard that is to do. Uh, BT Ryapel throwing out the first pitch. Everybody's excited. Kevin O'Sullivan's excited. And what happens? Kate Fisher goes out, starts hitting guys and walking guys. and They get behind and they don't come back and they lose the first game and the next two get rained out. Not exactly what you were hoping for to start the college football season for a Florida team that has high expectations. I mean, they're always high. They're really high this year, but I don't, I don't think they're, we need to get to the final again high They're. I think we can go back to Omaha and I think they believe they do. And please do not take too much from one game. It was one game. They didn't play the next two. And now they've got games coming up. We'll talk about those in our swamp games of the week. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on, and that's the way it's going to be. But that was really kind of a downer yesterday. I did watch the Purdue loss to Ohio State. That was really interesting, of Ohio State winning with an interim coach after firing their coach. But that does happen. It happens. You get that initial bump, you know, and then it then eventually you start – well, you're not playing at home and things don't seem as well. So, but you had that. You had baseball being canceled. You had softball being canceled the last games of that. You had the Daytona 500 being pushed back uh, to 4 o'clock uh, today. Uh, there was just a lot of – I mean, the – the um, what else was uh, canceled? Was it golf down in um, – yeah, the seniors was canceled. Uh, but anyway, so it left not much to watch on Sunday, but – I, I found things to watch. I, you know me. I can always find things to watch. But it was just a weird weekend, and we kind of were anticipating with a lot of excitement, Gator home opener and softball and everything. But I think this weekend may be just as good, if not better. Uh, let's get to number five on our process service of Gainesville. Starting five brought to you by Scott Hart. And that is, I want to send out credit to the Florida golf team for uh, winning the Gator Invitational, which they should do. most Many of the teams that were supposed to come didn't come because they had to move everything around because of the weather. They still shot incredible numbers. Their A team won the first, was first, and their B team was second. I know the competition won great, but they shot lights out. And that's a good sign for this golf team. Um, I, look, I'm invested in the golf team. You know that. I, I love the golf team. I loved loved it when I went out for it for one and a half minutes. I've told that story, but I don't. Maybe I'll tell it again before we get done here on our uh, Pat Dooley story times, which we're almost out. We're almost at the end of February. But again, if somebody wants to get involved in it, I'll keep telling stories. All right, that is time for our play of the weekend. And this is a different one for you guys. Uh, this is not something that was Gator-centric, uh, but it was something that went very viral. Uh, this young man named Parker Parker uh, Bird, who is uh, – and all we're going to do is show you coming up to the plate. East Carolina, he had a boating accident two years ago, lost his leg. First player ever to play in a Division One game with a prosthetic leg. And what a what a – moment that must have been for his family for everybody and it just when i saw that i go you know play of the week that's got it written all over and we could have done a lot of great things that the gators did during the week but that is our our weekend play of the week and that is brought to you by campus usa and we always love our friends at campus usa where i'm a banker where coach spur is a banker we got it covered man I tell you what else we have covered. We have a great interview coming up with Alyssa Lang from the SEC Network. It's going to be a fun interview. I look forward to uh, hearing what she has to say. Again, I, I, I've already heard it because we taped it a couple of days ago, but we're going to play it for you after we come back for break. You are listening to or watching another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI. From the Melvin Law Dooley Dome Gator Studio. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. 
Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FAPS. And he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. Need service? Call Process Service of Gainesville at 407-697-9592 or email shartgators, that's G-H-T-R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. I was driving behind a lady and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had 280 discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Melton fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melvin Law right now. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Okay, and welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melbourne Law Duly Dome Gator Studios. It's a great p- pleasure to bring on our guest today, and that is Alyssa Lang from the SEC Network. She was just in Gainesville on Tuesday of last week to uh, speak to the quarterback club, the Gainesville quarterback club, and great speech she gave. You survived Gainesville, though, because I know you took the tours of everything as well. It was awesome. Yeah, we we got to do a tour of the Florida football or athletics facility now, not just football. It's for all sports. And, you know, it's funny on Fridays when we're in Gainesville doing football games, we're in that building meeting with coaches and we get to pop in and have these meetings with coaches and coordinators. But we really only walk in and go through one room and that's it. So I've never fully gotten the experience of what this brand new facility down in Gainesville looks like. So it was awesome to be able to go through and see all the different features, what the student athletes get to experience. Uh, Ran into a couple of great Gators down there. Uh, I got to chat, which is always nice in sort of a slower time off season uh, when it comes to college football. So it was great. Had such a great time at the quarterback club. Really enjoyed it. So it was all in all a wonderful trip. Yeah, and uh, we were talking about small world, and I mean, not only is it a small world in that um, you, Alyssa, got to cover Coach Spurrier, who of course is back here, and we we have him on the podcast every Monday. Actually, you're taking his place today because he is at Bill Carr's funeral. Oh, wow. Oh, um, gosh. Okay. So you're, you're filling in for him, and then uh, you just found out that our producer, Zach, is married to a woman who was in your frater- uh, sorority to get with her, her. Yeah, I was in a uh, in a service sorority in uh, South Carolina. It was really focused around community service. So I got to meet her and a bunch of other great individuals. So yeah, the, the small world is small worlding today, for sure. Now, I know for you, I mean, you obviously are doing all kinds of stuff, sidelines, studio stuff, bas- women's basketball, but softball, baseball, you just keep it going. Uh, is, is it ever, do you ever have to like write down, okay, today is the sport I'm covering is baseball? <laughs> It is funny. There are times where I will have to write really mundane. In all seriousness, I will write really mundane things at the top of my notes or at the top of my script. And that usually comes tournament time. So when we're at the women's basketball tournament uh, and I'm on the desk hosting, that whole week is really a blur. We start on Wednesday, Thursday. By the time you get to Friday, with those first two days and it being four games on Thursday and four games on Friday. By the time we get to Friday night, you start to have that experience of who am I, where am I, who am I working with? So there are some times where I'll have to write what day it is, how many games we've played, just so that we've done so many shows at that point. Usually you're just talking off the top of your head. I don't want to get my wires crossed with whether it's Thursday or Friday. So that will happen. 
And then during the softball and baseball tournament, it's kind of the same thing. Again, just because there's so many games, what stadium am I in right now? <laughs> what day <laughs> of the week is it? What game are we about to play? Early on in my career at the SEC Network, I thankfully don't knock on wood. I'm going to mess this up now. I don't have to do it anymore. But early in my career, when I was going from sport to sport and working with a lot of new analysts who I'd never met uh, before season to season, I would really small write their names at the top of my sheet just <laughs> so that it just in case I didn't red light come on welcome into the show and I didn't brain fart on what somebody's name was going to be because that's like the probably the worst mistake you could make right is not knowing the name of the person sitting next to you in the heat of the moment so um I would write down even my own name Alyssa Lang, Steffi Sorensen, Drea Carter just so that okay I met you for the first time a week ago you, the brain can do funny things when it's full of adrenaline so <laughs> thankfully they're all my friends now and I know their names but that's definitely something i did in my first year <laughs> i mean it's you gotta it's gotta be rough for you you're surrounded by all these gators there you know you got doring you got laura you got tebow you got uh patrick young you know they're they're gators everywhere steffi sorensen yeah yeah steffi sorensen i just did a list of the top 12 announcers and stuff uh that went to florida it was easy to come up with 12, believe I me. Was, I was going to say, they're everywhere. And as you heard on Tuesday night, Chris Doring loves to make the joke that I'm constantly surrounded by Gators, not only at work, but at home as well, as my fiance is a graduate of the University of Florida. So I really can't get away from you guys, which is great. All of my Gator friends are very close friends, and I enjoy talking smack with them as every single season rolls around, because it always feels like South Carolina and Florida are in some kind of rivalry for something no matter what sport it is last year there were some knockdown drag outs on the baseball field and that was a ton of fun to do a weekly radio with chris doring during that stretch absolutely well you got to get a bet with him so you can make him wear you know something weird i i actually did last season uh when we got to the postseason because peter burns and chris doring have this lsu florida bet that unfortunately cd has been on the wrong side of for so many years now I was like, you know what, like, maybe maybe you need to branch out. Maybe you need to start you know, making bets against other schools. So we did for the postseason when baseball rolled around, especially after what happened in the regular season when South Carolina got the better of Florida. So I did get a free dinner out of him for that one. Oh, I had to come up with a free dinner for him when Florida beat South Carolina in the postseason. So we're, we're pretty even at this point. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you about, because you're going to be at both the tournaments uh, for uh, basketball, uh, and it does feel like a lot of times that, that obviously with the women's side, it's going to be the South Carolina Invitational, and um, the, on the other side, I mean, I think it's going to be one of the best tournaments we've ever seen, because I have no idea what's, who's going to win that, yeah. but just give us a little rundown on both uh, conference tournaments coming up in uh, just a few weeks now. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you on on both of those points. I'll, I'll start with the women's tournament. I think it could be interesting. You know, South Carolina, obviously, far and away, the number one team in the SEC, the number one team in the country. Uh, you look at bracketology and the first 16 seeds came out actually on Thursday night of this week, uh, counting down to the tournament. It would take like a meteor strike at this point for South Carolina to not be the number one overall seed, right? They'd have to go on an, a losing streak that's unprecedented at this point with this team. But you look at the rest of the league, and right now, if if it ended today, it looks like we would be getting about nine SEC teams in the women's tournament. Now, where that final seeding would fall becomes interesting. You've got LSU, who at this point looks to be about a four seed. They've lost a couple of conference games, but I think the LSU team that we've seen as of late is a much different team from when we first started conference play. I really think it's an LSU team that's built to go deep into the NCAA tournament again. The rest of the league, that's where it really gets interesting, right? You've got Florida, who's kind of on the outside looking in right now, but you look at the net ranking, and they've played a lot of really high-level competition. Now, they got to get out of their own way and not lose games on their home floor to Ole Miss like they yeah. did on Thursday night. That's going to severely hurt them. but. You look at Ole Miss, you look at Mississippi State, Vanderbilt's among the last four in right now, and there's uh, several teams that over the last few years have been trying to build back to either a place of consistency 
or build to a place of, okay, we're going to prove to people that we can be a winning program. And I think about Vanderbilt when I think of that, right? Pick to finish last in the SEC on the women's side, and they are in the tournament or should be as of right now. I still think they have a couple more opportunities to really pad that resume. So what I'm really interested in seeing is who those four see, top four seeds are going to be for Friday. Who gets the double buy? Is Tennessee right. able to hang on to one of those top four seeds? Because we still have so many important games to play. Tennessee and South Carolina just played on Thursday night. They got to play each other again at the end of the regular season. So as much as we know about South Carolina being number one on the women's side, that two, three, and four seed gets really interesting with how those matchups really shake out by the time we get to Greenville. Nashville, like you said, I am expecting complete and utter chaos. If the regular season has been any indication of what yeah. we're going to get in Nashville, this is going to be one of the hottest tickets that you can buy. I mean, I usually do the games Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, go home Saturday because we've got our selection shows on Sunday. You got to get ready for that in the studio. I'm kind of trying to figure out if I can buy a Saturday ticket or use my credential to come back in just as a fan and watch great basketball because that's what it's going to be. Uh, you look at the teams that look like they are built from a depth standpoint to make a run through Nashville and then potentially March Madness. Auburn has looked really good this season at home, maybe a little asterisk <laughs> there for what they've done on yep. the road, right? So that remains to be seen. Alabama has obviously developed into a very talented basketball team. I still kind of lead towards Tennessee as far as the team that if I'm really having to lean in on who I think could go the furthest in the tournament, they've just got so much experience, so much depth. Dalton Connect has gotten better as a defensive player as the season rolls on. And then Kentucky. What is Kentucky going to do in the postseason? They always show up in Nashville, and it's always a great time. But when we get to March Madness, are we going to have an earlier-than-expected exit for the Cats? We shouldn't with the amount of talent that that team has. But Florida's beaten them. South Carolina's beaten them. Gonzaga went to their house and beat them. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah you got, who you knows? Then and it's just crazy. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's going to be wild because, like you said, Auburn is great at home. At home, on the road, not so good. Now you're in a neutral site. You're not going to have that many fans there. Um, we don't know how South Carolina is going to travel. In the past, they've never showed up for that right. tournament. It's always been the Kentucky Invitational in terms of the fans, but obviously. Um, uh, Calipari doesn't give a rat's behind about the tournament itself, but I wanted to ask you one football question, and that is how weird it's going to be to be at SEC Media Days with 16 teams this year. Oh. And like, you're like, where, who do I talk to? Oh, we got to talk to nine guys over here and then eight over here. It's, it's uh, that's going to be wild, isn't it? But to be honest with you, it's always a wild week. I mean, by the time we get there to the time I'm flying home, I'm like, what just happened? It's kind of like what I described <laughs> with, with the tournaments. What day is it? Where am I? Who am I talking to? At this point, honestly, I don't even know that it's going to be weird because we've been talking about it so much. I think maybe last year, the year before, obviously, when it all broke at Media Days, was it two, two, three <laughs> years ago now? I, I yeah. can't even remember how long ago it was now. That would have been weird. But now it's like we've been following Texas and Oklahoma and just about every single sport, keeping up with what they've been doing, whether on the air or off the air. It almost feels like they're they're already here, right? We're already talking about them from a football standpoint because it's official. It's starting this season. Even baseball and softball, even though it's not happening right now with the season that is kicking off this week, we're still keeping an eye on them just to see what they look like throughout the course of their final season in their conference. So it's going to be awesome um, with Nick Saban being in the mix as well, being on the broadcast side of things. It sounds like that's going to be awesome. So it really is cool to look forward to the start of this new chapter in 2024. And the last time we had SEC expansion, I was in college kind of watching from afar, hoping that one day... This would be something that I'd be able to actually cover and and be part of. And right. now I get to be part of watching history for the SEC. And not only that, history in the biggest way, welcoming in two members who are going to truly raise the quality level of so much in the SEC. That's already so high. Uh, so the buzz that's always at Media Days, for that to get even bigger is kind of yeah. crazy to imagine. <laughs> It is. It's wild. Um, Alyssa Lang coming to us on the Big Mills cheesesteak. 
the Zoom line, said it's time for us to play Yes, No, Way, or Maybe with her. Three questions that we ask, and it is brought to you by Big Mills Cheese State Street Dining Done the Right Way, also sponsors of the Bob Dooley Invitational. I'm wearing the Bob Dooley Invitational hat from last year. Today, um, we were having that tournament May 11th. Uh, but uh, so we have three questions for, her, and uh, let's start with number one. When Mike Leach suggested you elope, you thought about it for a split second. Yes, I <laughs> stand by. I tell everyone who asks me this, I've always been the one who wants to. It's everyone else <laughs> around me who doesn't want to. And I genuinely, I, I talked about this when we were on the air after he passed, it's one of my biggest regrets. And I, you know, I didn't want to bother him during football season when he offered to, Hey, I'll get on the phone with Trevor and have the conversation. We were genuinely going to try to make that happen, but it's like, okay, it's the middle of football season. He doesn't need to be doing that right now. And unfortunately we ran out of time with him here with us, uh, uh on, on this earth. I will use that though to all of our family and friends who try to fight me on not wanting to elope because I am team elopement. And uh, I think, I think coach Leach and I had maybe a, a bond about that, that we didn't realize until that moment. <laughs> Mike was a good man. Mike, uh, in fact, last year we put him into our golf tournament hall of fame because he sent a helmet every year, no matter where he was, Washington state, you know, uh, Love that. he just was a lovely man and, uh, I really appreciated him. And we actually had, uh, I think 35 coaches respond with helmets in his honor for, uh, last year's tournament. That's so. awesome. That's a, he touched a lot of lives. He did for sure. very much. So, all right. Number two on yes, no way, or maybe Florida has a winning record in football in 2024. Ooh, Maybe. <laughs> you, yeah, you know what? I realized I could answer maybe, and that actually makes things a lot more convenient for me. I would love to see this team exceed expectations. Uh, I, I guess it depends on who you talk to, what the expectations are, right? Florida fans always have high expectations, as they should. That schedule is tough. And when I was down there with you guys on Tuesday at the quarterback club, I was talking to some Gator fans who were like, but the, the rest of the media needs to remember that our schedule is tough. And I actually thought it might be more of the opposite where fans were going, well, it shouldn't matter. We should still win 10, 11 games. But it seemed like, okay, fans are prepared for what 2024 will look like. I need to go back. It's one of my summer projects to go back into the history books and look over college football schedules. I would be shocked if this wasn't the toughest college football schedule of all time. Has anyone played a more difficult schedule than what Florida, as it stands right now, yeah. is set I, to I, play I, in 2024? I know I, that I know that um, like Arkansas has had some really tough schedules. But they have like this tough because um, it's it's hard. It's going to be hard. It is. It is. And and I think even. 500 or slightly above would be a great year for where Florida is right now. And I know there are fans who are probably pulling their hair out listening to me say this, but this is a program that's still built on youth, that still has a lot of young guys, a lot of growing to do that I think they're in a great position to be able to do. But then when you go through a wood chipper of a schedule like that, even a team that has been built for consistency and has been built for winning over the past five seasons or however long would struggle with a schedule like the one that Florida has in 2024. So I'm a hard maybe on winning record, but I hope so. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, all right. Number three on yes, no way, or maybe brought to you by Big Mills cheesesteaks. College football will expand the playoffs again by 2030 in five years, six years. I lean towards yes, but I don't say yes and necessarily agree with it from a fan standpoint. I think from the conversations that we've had over the past few years as we go to expand 12, I see that happening again. Maybe I'll buy in by the time we get to 2030 if we expand to 16 or whatever that number is. It wasn't until this past season that I was really buying the 12 team playoff to begin with, if we're being honest, because I've always kind of been on the side of, well, we've gotten the four best teams and the eventual champion is the best team in the country. It is working. Why would we need 12? As a fan, I loved having the, the possibility of having more games. This was the first season, this past 2023 season was the first season where I was looking at those top 12 teams and where they finished going. 
okay, this would be fun. And maybe the distance between that number four team and that number seven team wasn't so far off at the end of the day. So uh, I'm full in on 12 now, thanks to 2023. Maybe I'll be there by 2030 if we're at 16. I do think it expands, but I'm hot and cold on on what I think about that at this point. Yeah, I think that some of the uh, the people that were against the original expansion, this is what they feared is and then it will be 12 and it'll be 16 and you're going to be 32. 64. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and um, I don't know. I mean, as these players get more monetarily incentivized to play in games, um, maybe we will see that happen because uh, it could be part of their contracts as we go forward. But you and you talked about NIL Tuesday night. You and I talked about NIL Tuesday night. I didn't ask you one NIL question you should be thankful for that because <laughs> we got out of it with no NIL talk. We don't appreciate we that. <laughs> Alyssa, always great talking to you. You were unbelievable Tuesday night. And your story is such a great one. In fact, I wish my daughter had been there. She is in sports uh, journalism here in Florida. And, oh, you know, just just how you kind of uh, worked your way up and made it made yourself into a, you know, who you are today and uh, do, do such a great job on uh, the SEC number. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, if you ever want to swap journalism stories on the next podcast, I'm, I'm happy to come on again. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Alyssa. We appreciate it. We'll be back with more on another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melbourne Law Duly Dome Gator Studios. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton, taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life, and the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running Running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates. A Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years. Check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me. If you want to do some advertising, at 352-317-3444. Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melbourne Law Duly Dome Gator Studio. And I want to thank all of our great sponsors and uh, uh, especially Alyssa Lang for coming on the show. She was in town doing the quarterback club last Tuesday, and we had already talked about her coming on. And then uh, we went ahead and taped it a couple of days ago. She's actually on a cruise right now. She and her uh, fiance Trevor went on a cruise to get away with from things before all hell breaks loose. Because don't forget, for the SEC network especially, you're dealing with uh, all these uh, different tournaments. You got the women's tournament, you got the men's tournament, you got to do all the uh, NCAA previews, and then you're right into spring football. And next thing you know, <laughs> your summer's gone too um, because of baseball. So. Uh, I know that's the way I used to be, find a couple of weeks somewhere to do that. But anyway, we appreciate her uh, coming on the show. Let's get to our Hesser and Kipke three things. And, of course, it's brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a Gainesville law firm specializing in the areas of family law and workers' compensation. If you're a loyal listener of this show, you know who we are by now. If not, Google the firm, check out the reviews, and hear what our clients have to say. Ken and Jennifer can be reached 24-7 via call or text at 352-339-9920. That is Hesser and Kipke. We appreciate them. 
for all their support. Uh, number one on Hesser and Kipke's three things would have to be Tiger Woods uh, withdrawing from the R Riviera. I'm sitting there. I'm 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 going to sit here and watch Tiger the whole day. I don't care if he plays good. I just want to watch him play and and kind of make observations. I saw like two holes. Boom. The next thing you know, he's in a golf cart getting carted off. They said he had the flu. He said he had the flu. I, I, there's no reason not to believe him. Um, I it, it looked weird, but I don't know what's going on there. Look, Tiger. I don't want to say Tiger's never coming back to that. He's never coming back to the level he was. We know that. You can't damage your body like that and and come back at some point to where you were. You're not going to do that. Um, but he can still play well enough. He could win at Augusta because that's the only course that doesn't favor the long hitters. Meanwhile, everybody on this tour is bombing it past him. So I think the, the bottom line is Tiger may end up leaving the tour and, and not, and just playing fun little things with his kids because everybody's gotten too good. He's digressed and we all know he has because of injuries. Everybody else has progressed. Everybody's gotten stronger because of him. And it may just not be a workable deal for him to play any more golf. I hate that. I uh, love watching him play. Love watching uh, when tournaments, when he's in it, are much more interesting. It's like I always say, your grandma watches when Tiger's playing. But maybe not anymore. He's kind of the Taylor Swift of golf. You know, like people watch that don't normally watch. <laughs> Oh, Tiger, I didn't say that out loud. Uh, number two on um, process service of Gainesville. I'm sorry. Number two on the Hesser and Kipke, three things. Um, the uh, Big 12, or the, I'm sorry, the Pac-12 and George Kleokloff, whatever his name is. I, I still haven't learned how to pronounce it. Kleokloff, right? Kleokloff? Yeah. Anyway, they parted ways. He's not going to be the commissioner anymore. We knew this was coming. It was just a matter of when. Ends up, it's going to be the end of the month. Uh, they have what a mess they have out there. They don't have no. I mean, they don't even know what their conference is going to look like, or whether they're going to be allowed into this cash grab, which is the twelve team playoff. What a mess you have there. Whether you even have a Pac twelve or not, I don't know if you do or not. I guess you can have one. It doesn't mean they have to get in. Put them in the others receiving votes category. I mean, to me, they should let four teams in. I'm not even sure the ACC should get in, but we'll let the ACC in. Let four teams get the automatic buys, and the other um, eight are the – so if there's a team that plays in the Pac-12 and beats everybody and goes 12-0, and yeah, we'll stick in there. We'll get you in the tournament, sure. But we're not going to let you in automatically if you go 9-3 and three in that conference beating the Boise States of the world. Uh, that's what I would do, but we'll see what happens there. It's going to be interesting. Uh, finally, on our Hester and Kipke three things, I don't know if you watched the NBA uh, basketball all-star game last night. I can tell you who did not. <laughs> that was me. I kept flipping back and forth. I'd be flipping around just looking for something to watch. And then we'd, come, and then we'd go all-star preview. And then it'd be all-star hype fest and all-star preview preview. and. And then finally they started the game and I went, I don't want to watch this. I don't think I ever got to the game, to be honest with you. The final, though, if you didn't hear, was 211 to 186. Now, 211 seems like a lot of points against air, which is basically what they were playing against. Uh, they were playing against air. Nobody tried to play defense. They've been trying to get the game to be more competitive. There's no answer. There, that, that's a problem. There is no answer to any All-Star games. There is none. The All-Star games, you know what they're great for? The people in that community. Now, that's what I've always told you bowls were good for. People in the community, programming for ESPN, in this case, TNT, programming. I get all that part of it, but doesn't mean – you're going to ever get big numbers. If you want to have these all-star games, quit hyping them up so much because nobody's watching them. Um, but they, it was just, um, if you're not even going to try to play defense, why would I want to watch you play any sport? I mean, what are you, the Florida Gators? 
What, not playing defense? Florida Gator football? I didn't play defense for four years. Uh, that's what it looked like, a lot of that. All right, that is our Hesser and Kipke three thing. Let's get to our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the weekend. And for me, it it, uh, it was an easy one, and that is Thomas Hout. And that his performance, I think without him playing at the level he played at, I don't, Florida died. I agree with what Todd Golden said. They don't win that game. I mean, he was great in the first half making the three threes, but he was great throughout the game doing little things, getting rebounds. He ended up with 17 points and seven rebounds. But like, for example, the three threes he made in the first half were gigantic. They kept Florida in the game. And then late in the game, he makes this, he gets a tough pass and makes a great a little bank shot uh, that gives Florida a six-point lead that kind of allowed them to play, you know, with a lead at the end of the game. Uh, you know, I think there was like two minutes left in the game at that point. Uh, I thought he was the player of the game, no doubt about it. And uh, he is now the gator of the weekend as adorned by Adam Trubko to go. And that's all you need to know. Once you've won that award, you are a big timer, okay? But he was great in that game. And uh, look, this kid and Condon played good too. These guys are freshmen and they, you know, stick around guys. But this coach seems to know what he's doing a little bit. And he's making great things happen. So um, I, I think people feel better about Gator basketball when they have it a lot. I always thought, look. I didn't agree with the way people treated Mike White. I certainly didn't agree with the way he exited, uh, but they're 4-0 against him. And I, I look, I don't root against him, but I root against him when he's playing Florida. Guess what? And he's 0-4 so far. All right, let's get to Leonardo's at Millhopper Quick Picks, brought to you by our great friends at Leonardo's at Millhopper. Um, Kyle Cohen and the friends out there. Let's go ahead and make a poll Thursday. What do you say, guys? Let's pull a winner on Thursday. Uh, let's do that. We've had a lot of people qualify, so I think it's time for us to go ahead and pull a winner. I'm going to give you a spread here. Florida, Alabama, it's a big game on Wednesday. As you know, if Florida can win this game, they all of a sudden they, you have to talk about them in the SEC race. Look, I'm not talking about them yet, but you'll have to talk about them at that point if they beat Alabama at Alabama. And what a huge win that would be. Then I would declare Florida in without question. They could lose the rest of their games they'd be in. I, I still wouldn't want you to do that. Uh, but I'm going to give you a spread of four. I'm going to give Florida four points. Florida getting four at Alabama. Send them in. Patrick Dooley, 54 at gmail.com. And you can uh, qualify. Last chance to qualify. For our next poll, where you will win $25 at Leonardo's at Mill Hopper. Good deal there. I'm telling you, man, that is some good pizza over there. And also, you will win a uh, a, a hat from my golf tournament from last year. Pretty soon, we're going to be giving golf tournament hats from this year away because that's coming up not far away. Uh, if you're not in, you better get in quick because I know a lot of people have gotten in. I'm checking on it tomorrow to find out how many are already have uh, signed up. Better sign up. I'm telling you, this is going to be a, a limited field. Um, but anyway, that's our Leonardo's at Mill Opera Quick Picks. And I know Kyle Cohen will have a team there and be a sponsor, a uh, title sponsor of the tournament, along with Joe Caloria. We appreciate them so much. Let's get to our Swamp Games of the Weekend, or the week. Not of the weekend. we got a lot of games this week, including a game tonight. Florida's playing Oklahoma State tonight in softball. Now, this was a game that they just kind of came up with. On they they worked out a deal to play them because they missed so many games and they want to get some games in, um, and so they're playing Oklahoma State in softball tonight. Uh, but again, a lot of you don't listen to the show till Tuesday, so we'll go ahead and give you those games. Uh, Florida baseball playing UNF at six o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday, six o'clock. It's on the plus. It's good for me. Wednesday, six thirty. It's on the plus. I think it's on the SEC plus. I don't know that they're that different playing UNF again. I, I think they're the same. Whatever I say, Florida baseball, it'll show up. Uh, and that's great. Um, okay, the Oklahoma State game is tonight at 6, but I don't know if it's going to be shown on TV anywhere. 
they have a double header Wednesday and Thursday softball does four and six thirty. Um, they'll be playing. I think they're playing UNF as well. Uh, and then um, I wanted to give you another basketball game to watch on Wednesday. Florida's playing obviously against Alabama seven o'clock. That's ESPN two. If you want to go to the swamp and watch that game, I know that my daughter was there for the last one, had a blast. Um, head over there to the swamp. They got some unbelievable drink specials. Also, though, on Wednesday night, number one, UConn playing number 17, Crate, 830 on ESPN. Uh, no, I'm sorry, on FS1 is that game. And then you have another um, top 20 matchup. Uh, Baylor and uh, West Virginia playing. Actually, I don't think that's West Virginia, is it? Sometimes I have to pull out my glasses to tell uh, to read my writing, but uh, no, it's number twelve Baylor against uh, number eighteen BYU. I don't know how I could have made that out of that. Okay, so you got anyway. You got two top twenty teams playing there. That's a nine o'clock ESPN game. So those are all the good games for this week. There's a lot of good basketball to watch. Uh, not a, gr a lot of great SEC games. Florida Alabama is a highlight of it, believe me, um, this week. And then, of course, this weekend we'll give you all the stuff that's coming up as well. Let us get to wrap it up with Pat Dooley's story time. As always, brought to you by Eastlake Pediatrics and our good friend Mike Jordan over there. We appreciate him and appreciate all his sponsorship um, for doing this for so long. Uh, and I, we're going to talk a little bit, and I hate to have to do this again, but we do, uh, a little bit about Alan Trammell and his passing away a couple of days ago. Um, it does feel like I'm Marty McFly and the pictures of my youth are fading away. Uh, Alan Trammell was a a great dude, really good friends with Coach Spurrier, uh, good friends with a lot of people over there, and just a good guy. Um, gosh, I'll never forget being in the stands. When he picked off that pass against FSU, this is after Spurrier hit Charlie Casey for a touchdown. So this would have been 65. And uh, Trammell picks off a pass, runs it all the way back for the clincher. Florida wins 30 to 17. He was like my hero that day. I remember that. Um, that was a huge play. Um, really good player. Really good player. Really good baseball player. In fact, I hear that Florida is going to do something uh, on the baseball field to honor him at some point. I don't know if it's going to be this weekend or not, but I think I know they're going to do something about it. But he was, I think he hit 400 one year, but I know he was all SEC in baseball um, and all SEC in football. So great athlete, but he was just a great guy. And you hate to see people like that. You hate to see people us lose people like we've lost recently. Bill Carr, uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, Martin Fennelly, and my buddy, uh, the columnist down in Tampa, actually going to his celebration of life a couple of weeks from now. Uh, just all the people we keep losing. And I, you know, I just want to send uh, all my heartfelt wishes out to their families of all of them. Uh, but Alan Trammell, that, that's a name. Those are one of those, there's, there's certain names that when they go, you go, oh man, because they were, you got to know them and can't tell you how many times I spent at hotel bars with him just shooting the crap, you know, just talking and stuff like that. Um, just anyway, really devastating to, to hear of his loss. It feels like I feel bad for Coach Spurrier. We'll talk to him Monday next week. I feel bad for him because his center and, and good friend Bill Carr and now his one of, one of his best friends. Alan Trammell. So uh, we just wanted to make sure we saluted him properly and we appreciated him when he was on this earth. He was a great gator and a great man. Uh, that's going to do it for our, and we'll, hey, I don't want to keep bringing you bad news. Okay. I don't want to keep having to honor people. I want them to live, <laughs> but it's just, I'm going to make sure we do it when they, when they pass because they're great gators and there are a lot of great gators out there. All right, that's going to do it for our podcast today, another Duly Noted podcast. We appreciate Zach for doing a great job, as he always does, um, putting up with me. 
And we appreciate our guests this week, Alyssa Lang. Again, Matt McCall, be our guest on Thursday. And until then, for, for another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Duly Dome podcast room, we are deep, we are way back, and we are out of here.